Guru Sastrila and Dr. Prashi Sringa, the coordinator of the, uh, this program, and respected uh, Kevin Ketri, Sangha member, and the Dharma friends. At the very beginning, on behalf of all the established members, I would like to say Tashi Dile, Happy New Year, and warm welcome to you all. First of all, uh, congratulations to all the successful candidates who came at this stage through the test. Uh, we, uh, we respect and greatly applaud your hard work, diligence, and enthusiasm that you have shown for this translation program. Before this program, we found that uh, 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 students are highly interested in translation in our university, but unfortunately, there are no any program or workshop held so far for the period of one month. We realize that students are learning by their own. There was no any concrete guidance to channelize the energy, enthusiasm, and the interest of the students to learn the translation. So as soon as we um, began our tenure for SWFC, we put this translating, pro uh, translating program as SWFC's primary agenda to help the students. So today, here we are. We are highly optimistic that this workshop will benefit students in highest possible by clarifying doubts, learning new techniques, and realizing the problem while translating into the English language. Today we have Mr. Gavin among us, who happily accepted to help us, guide us, and lead us to the vast field of translation by sharing his ocean of knowledge and experience. <laughs> Mr. Gavin La is a prominent translator in West, and he has spent 14 <coughs> long years in uh, studying in Dharamsala. Uh, first he studied mm -hmm. in uh, Tibetan library, and later when he is uh, uh, later also he studied in eight years in Institute of Buddhist Dialectic, which is Thingy, uh, Thingy Tassan. And after he returned uh, return back to England, he, uh, he worked uh, full time as a translator in Mr. Uh, Geshe Tukin Jimbal's Institute of Tibetan Philosophy. Mr. Gavinna has mm -hmm. translated uh, many Tibetan works in, into English. To name some of them are Exposition of Kal Chakra Tantra, Ornament of Stainless Light by the Kirib Losong Gyalso, History of Tibetan Medicine by Dese Sangi Gyalso, Lamb Illuminating the Five Stages by Jiri Muche, and Kabj uh, the Biography of Kabjading Muche. Currently, he is involved in translating the Hui uh, Githamoy Tapshung. So, we hope you will uh, miss that soon. You want me to dance? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Again, uh, I want to say that uh, this is a uh, great honor and highest privilege for entire students that Mr. Gavin Ketula is here among us to give his invaluable time. Thank you, Mr. Gavin La, for coming all the way from England, especially for us. And so I request all the students to join with me to applause and give him a warm welcome in our university. Secondly, I request uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor Lopsan Dubrasachila to give a, uh, to offer the uh, Kada uh, as a token of respect and welcome. And now I will request uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor <coughs> to give some uh, on the ongoing program. The Kamnegin do that, huh? Any Jetiba didn't touch the la. Any Loptiba given that low mongoose in English in your city. Darum Salangin Bari. Tangan to engineer, shall I show more? You shake the corner, Puila, Tado memory, Tolomango, you are it. Tangan to engineer, shall I show more? You shake the corner, Puila, Tado memory, Tolomango, you are it. And she danced Sula Lomia Kang, that Dina Lola. Yamship de Zengi Shinani, the Yur de Zeng Yorita. Go Ming Samji Yorita, Yaman Yori. And so Subu Susuke Dumba Dang Tiunet, Akbarishan Zurich, Rochi Yore. 
Thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, I think I was invited last year, but I, 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 I couldn't make it. Um, but uh, now I'm here. <laughs> I've been here before, and I've always enjoyed my time here. I spent two months here when I was translating the This is Angegyaso Kobuk, you know, this history of Tibetan medicine. Very difficult text. But when I came here, one student, one Tibetan student said to me, you're translating this text, this is Angegyasu, even we can't understand it. So I said, oh, oh no. <laughs> so I had some, you know, questions, and I was helped very much by Professor Lawson Tenzin and by, uh, uh, um, by Lawson Obu Shastila, because in one point in the text, there is a whole verse uh, from the, uh, on the meaning of Tenchu, and uh, he writes it in Sanskrit, and then goes through a, a goes through a sikur of this verse, and then a, a dungur. And so, um, Vice Chancellor helped me a lot on that. So I have fond memories of being here. So, and then of course, then then there was a Tengur translation conference, which is His Holiness Dalai Lama attended a few years ago. So now I'm here. So, what to say? Um, how is this class going to be? First of all, uh, I will speak mainly in English, obviously, because this is English. You are attempting to translate into English. I will speak mainly in English. I don't know your level of English. I haven't, I don't know. So, I would like to know, you know, what level your English is. So, there's two things. First of all, if you don't understand anything, just put your hand up and say, I don't understand, right? Please tell me. It's no good you sitting there, you know, with uh, Lepatongba, you know, it's no good. <laughs> so please, if you don't understand, please tell me. Also, I would like some interaction with you. I don't want you to sit there and, you know, be all shy and bashful. You know, bashful? Baksa, 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 like like this. You know, we in the West, we are a little bit nugget uh, sabo, right? Uh, <laughs> we we are we are a lot. We are not afraid to speak. You know. So please, I'm also a qualified language teacher, and in when I teach language, it is always asserted that the students must talk. They must speak. If you have any questions, just speak. Don't worry about interrupting me. I won't mind, okay? So uh, that way I will get to know your level of English and that will be very helpful for me. Um, also, talk to each other. When we do exercises, mm -hmm. we will do them in pairs. Now, this is good, you have the seats over there. and You work together. <coughs> when we do the exercise, you work together with each other, right? Just sit in the person next to you. You can change if you don't like the person next to you. <laughs> <laughs> then the next day you can change somebody else. This is very good. We encourage this. You should find someone who is on the same level as you, so you can work with them, what you know, and help each other. Okay. So please do that. Um, as for how the class is going to go. I thought roughly I would divide it up into three main areas. Whether we can cover each of the three areas in, in each class, I don't know. But the first area will be translation theory. Now I know you don't like theory. Theory life is a mare. There's a sign on the wall that says one drop of practice is worth more than an ocean of theory and resolution. Practice <laughs> 
practice yabu yongo mare munere practice you need theory ben lojon you do practice you do lojon lojon is for uh, a practice of meditation and uh, without that you can go wrong rwa so we will have theory but not much just a little bit of theory because theory <coughs> is the way it shows you the way how to translate and why you're translating and the function of the translation it shows you that once you know the theory then you can go so it is important to know the theory so we'll do a little bit of that theory practice and also in the theory side of things i will have some tibetan text extracts of tibetan texts that have already been translated primarily i'm thinking of lomron chamo which was translated by this translator team in america you know as long as ken zurum she he did say that the future of uh translation and even the dharma i think is with the west but i want to disagree with him i want you to be the future <laughs> i want tibetan young tibetans to be the future of translation as i said to the, to the losono bushastila the buddha was here he wasn't in new york <laughs> or virginia he was here whatever so therefore it's important isn't it this place is jinab shukwarwa is blessed so if you, what better place to do translation than sarnas huh really when i come to india i always feel much lighter my body feels lighter my mind feels lighter especially if i go to damshala i know damshala is high but also <coughs> here i my mind is clearer i can work whether this is jinlab shukpo or whether it is i don't know what it is <laughs> but it is true this is, there is a lot of advantages i know we don't have you don't have all the technological advances that you, we, you have in america and and in the west i know that and there great colleges in harvard and so forth i know that but you have something else you know you have this you have this meeting of you know we there is with kedup you know kedup keba and duba you need both keba and duba <coughs> here this place has been blessed by duba you know you know top top chambo these so there's something special here um so theory is important and in i will look at this um we will go through i will give you each of you will have photocopies right of a tibetan text and english translation each of you and you have the photo so you can write on it we will go through and we we'll say why they translated it why and explore why they chose this word it may be that i don't always agree maybe you don't agree with their choice of word but that doesn't matter what is important is that we can learn from this the team it was a team it wasn't just one person it was a team of translators very learned translators who translated this lamrin chimo so we can look at it right so that's the theory uh the second thing i would like to do is english language right um because you cannot actually teach translation you can teach translation skills you can teach translation methodology and you can teach the language but translation depends upon experience and you cannot teach experience you can only gain experience and the more experience you have with english the better it will be we always say you should only translate into your own language so i translate into english no i can do th- that i i couldn't translate into tibetan all i did one time i translated mm-hmm. into, into tibetan mm-hmm. and this was a um you know fpmt lamas of rumbshe here is this many chuso around the, and and these geshes they go to this and these geshes they have to sign a contract and it's very legal and there were lots of words about dental insurance and things like this and i had to translate this into uh, into tibetan so of course i was hopeless I couldn't do it by myself. I had to have the help of a Tibetan, you know. But 
you are translating into a language which is not your own language. So it's very important that your understanding of English is not just dictionary English. You know, dictionary English is not enough. In English, we have, you know, Karesa, Dunda Chik Sik Mombo, Sik Chik Dunda Mombo. We have that, and you have it too. You can look up a word in an in, in English dictionary and say, oh, it is this, you know, Gewa, virtue, you know, or something like this. <laughs> but it has to be right for the text. Nekap, Nekap, Lagu. You have to have it for right for the context. This can only come from having a a wide understanding of vocabulary. So we'll be looking at vocabulary. You know, how many words do you think are there? If you take the word yakpo, how you translate yakpo? Oh, good. How many words for good are there in English? I've got a list here. I think there are about thirty, forty. You know, there are so many words. We have, for example, you know, there are many words, and you have to choose the right one, especially if you're translating mulam or verse, poetry. You know, you cannot just choose a word that doesn't fit. It has to be zimbo gudua. It must fit, and that only can come from experience. It can only come from experience. So we will do English language. We will do some grammar. Because grammar, you know, we say in English, um, um, grammar is the skeleton. 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 Ah. Ah. On which you hang the flesh of vocabulary, right? So skeleton, mena, any flesh is masagrava. Oh, tena she. Grammar, mena. <laughs> and a uh, vocab- vocabulary yabu yongo mare. So grammar is not something um, that you study separately. You study within the language, right? It's within the body. It's not separate as it is within the body. So grammar has to be studied. So we will study grammar, but we will study within, within situations. That's a grammar. And then vocabulary. And then the other one is syntax. Syntax means the how to put the right words in the right order. In, when we teach English language, we have a little game. You take the sentence, I love you. Right? I love you. I love you. It's only three words. Then you take the word only. And where do you put it in the sentence? If you, wherever you put it in the sentence, the meaning changes. Only I love you. I only love you. I don't like you, but I only love you. I love only you. So, you know, this is syntax. You must get the word order correct. Sometimes the word order is determined by feelings, not by grammar. This again is only experience. So syntax, grammar, uh, and vocabulary. These things are, are, are important, right? Then the third one is we will do some practice texts. Okay, I have <coughs> got here extracts of Tibetan texts from across the range. And what we will do is that uh, you will have photocopies and you will, pr- you will translate them. And then we will look at them in class. You know, in class, you will read out, some will read out, and then we discuss, why does he say this? Why do they say this? Is this better? <coughs> um, okay? That's good. Ah, mix it. <laughs> so, um, what I have, uh, just for example, I have got um, examples of um, of prayers. 
you know, devotional verse, which is very difficult, very difficult. Um, something on Tawa, I got, for example, there's something on Semsampa Tawa. I don't know what level of studies you have done. Have you studied Pachin? Have you studied Uma? I know some have and some haven't. If there is something that you haven't studied and you don't know the vocabulary, then tell me we won't do it. It's important. I'm not going to do anything new. So, I've got something by His Holiness, a, a little, a short speech by His Holiness. Just a little bit. Something Lama Chomo. I've got something by, we're going to do this tomorrow. Something written by a little girl in Busokan, in Damsala. It's children's language. Very beautiful, very simple. Something from uh, Junjuk. Um, something from uh, Sutra, Do. Uh, something on Kharisa, uh, Semjung, uh, Kundronga, you know, do you know Semjung, Ngapjongachi? Something like the 51, because there's a lot of vocabulary. Very useful. You know, this Nyanyu Nisu Sachi, Marabe, this Sachi, Sanire, ah, Nisu, there's 20, there's 21 now, I've added a new one. <laughs> there's 20. Very useful, you know? And um, some biography. I have Sangigi uh, Namtar, but one that's written for children. When I teach Tibetan, I use a lot of readers from the children's book, and I have one on Sangigi Namtar. It's not difficult. Then something on Asinyi, cause and effect, something like this. Um, uh, something on refuge. And something on Drupta. Drupta? You are okay with that? Uh, the four tenets and so forth. And maybe something on. We can decide, you know, as we go along, we can decide. If there is something that uh, is not suitable, we'll change it. There's a big library here, I can photocopy anything, right? So, if there's something not suitable, you must tell me. I don't want to sit here like some megaphone, you know, <laughs> like this, and you just falling asleep in the back. Not like this. This is two-way. Two-way, you understand? In, um, when we teach English, we say, uh, you don't learn a language, you acquire it. Tokure. Like a child. Right? If you listen, if you, how does a child learn a language? They don't study grammar, they don't read, they don't study books, they listen. And the mother and father, and they talk, and they make mistakes, and we laugh at them. My little granddaughter, she's only four, but she talks, talks, not talk, 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 talk. And maybe she makes a mistake, and so we correct her, and she learns. If she sit there like this, she won't learn, so you must talk to me. Ra. Okay? So, that, how much time have we got? No, two minutes. Huh? Two minutes. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, oh. Okay, well, I was going to... I, 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 I had something prepared. Um, but uh, I don't know if we have time to do it. But I'll just go through very quickly, okay? Um... So what, just very quickly then, we we'll do some more of this tomorrow, but for the last 15 minutes, what is translation? You know? The word trans is Latin. It means across. It means across. Something is carried across. Trans, transmission, translation, transforming. Something is carried across. What is carried across, right? Some message is carried across, right, from the original author. Right? There are many uh, commentaries. They are, are, are called uh, gomba rabse, gomba. What is a gomba? It is the gomba is the thinking of the Buddha or the the the, uh, the kepa, kepa, gomba. So that gomba is carried across gomba into another language, right? And so therefore, we say that in translation there is transmission. Transmission means to send, right? Mit, mit means to send. That's all. 
transmit. So something is transmitted, a message is transmitted, right? How is it, how is it transmitted? <coughs> it's transmitted through translation for us. If you are Tibetan, then of course it's not transmitted through translation. But if the messages of the great lamas and the Buddhas and the great pundits of India is to be transmitted to the West, it has to be transmitted through translation. So translation is what carries the message across. Right? So how important is that? How important is that? You know? As uh, uh, Gemma Sanoba Shastri was saying, it's so important that, that this is carried across correctly. So, what is it carried across? It carried across time, because many of these texts were written in the 15th, 14th century, and they've been carried into the 21st century. It's carried across culture, right? Because the culture of the ancient Tibetan is not the culture of 21st century. So it has to carry across the culture. And of course it's carried across language. So a translator's duty is to carry this message across these three things. It's not easy to do. Across the time, time, I mean in, 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 the, in time and culture, there are many references to uh, certain phenomena that we don't understand or we don't have any re relevance to these days. And they, that has to be somehow carried across, you know. And of course, there's the language problem, which will, this is what we are here for. So, how basically is that message to be carried? How is it? Now, when I translate, this is what I do, right? This is what I do. I am not Tibetan, so it's a little different. But I think the process is the same. There are three steps to translating. The first one is to understand the Tibetan in Tibetan. When I work on a text, the first thing I do is I forget that I'm English. I am a Tibetan. Well, you know, I'm Tibetan. I put on my Tibetan hat, right? <laughs> I talk to myself in Tibetan. I think in Tibetan. My wife is always saying, who are you talking to? <laughs> I say, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Why? Because you know that when a Geshe or Lama gives explanation on text. They use colloquial language to understand classical language. It's so important uh, for, for us Westerners to speak Tibetan as well as understand it. It's, you have to have both. So I talk and sometimes I pretend that I'm like a Geshe who's trying to give myself an explanation. If I don't understand it, I read it out loud again and again and again. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Like this, and slowly, slowly, understanding, hopefully, will come. Right? Whoops. Um, now, understand the Tibetan until you can taste it. Taste is nyongwarwa, nyam nyongwarwa, you experience it. When you understand something, it's, ah, oh, it's like not verbal. It's not verbal, it, it's something like a light that comes on. Yeah, I got it, you know, you understand it, right? That's you have some nyongwa. Then you move over. I'm going through very quickly, but we'll do this again. Then you take off Tibetan hat and you put on English hat. <laughs> right? And you say, this message, this gongba, now I have the gongba. Hopefully I have gongba. How is this gongba expressed in English? If this lama, Jesongkapa, whoever it was, if he was speaking English, what would he say? What would he say now? What would he say? You ask yourself this question. You have the answer in, you have the Tibetan meaning in your head. You have that understanding. Now you must express. This word express is very important, you know. Express. You have to somehow bring it out into another language. How is this message expressed in English? Okay, then the third and the final thing is that you express it through English grammar, syntax, punctuation, which is not existing in, in Tibetan. <laughs> <laughs> we will look at punctuation. There's something called a comma. 
I'm a great believer in the comma. I have great belief and faith in the comma. It's a very small little mark, but it's very important. It's very important. Some people think, oh, it's not important. It is important. Punctuation. Paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Now, these days, in, when books in Tibetan are being published, they're using paragraphs. But in the old Pecha style, there are no paragraphs. If you want to find something, you then spend the next half an hour looking for it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, paragraph. Headings. Uh, Tibetan texts have headings, of course, but the way we do in English translation, we put the heading, you know, and then we are in, in, in a different font, we make it bold, and then we put subheading, and then we put at the beginning of the book, we have table of contexts, uh, 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 contents, we have indexes and so forth, right? F we, have, we have footnotes when necessary. We'll look at all these things later. Footnotes or endnotes. Glossary, very important. We'll look at glossaries. Glossaries, bibliography, mm -hmm. and so forth. To get the message across. None of these things change the gongba of the um, original. They don't change at all. They are just for the reader, helping the reader. Okay, they do not change the message. So you can see by this that the way to translate is not, if you say, not word for word, it's not like... Translating is not like taking something from a s one shelf and putting it on another shelf, like this. You know, like in the supermarket, they, they take one and put it there. Then they take this one, put it there. This is not translation, okay? This is some kind of literal exercise. But translation is a experiential process. Nyam nyong tong translation jegore mato. Otherwise, this sikrere, uh, sikrere, it's not translation. Why? Because this is not what the author said. Huh? So, um, so that, it's like that. So, uh, I wanted to give you one little example. Um, there's a lung. You may know this. <coughs> Kaisa. Jimbe along the Trimgi De. You know? Okay, you know this. Okay? Don't I sell but do I? That Jimbe, Jimba, Nyamsulena, any the Namungi Jebo, Sechimala, Kaisa, Longsu, Jungare, any Sosa Sultrim, Domba Sultrim, Kayania, Sungna, Sung Tubna, any Sechimala, Luki Deva, Sungi Deva, Jungare, Ra. Understanding is not difficult. But how are you translated in English? It is a verse. It is a verse. So it should be kept as a verse. There is no verb in there. It's there. Jimbe long chu tungi de. Jungwa or it is not there. It's not there. So you need to think about how to translate that. First of all, you need to think about how do you translate Jimba. You know? How you translate Jimba? Sungda. Ah? Generosity, anybody? Anything else? Mm -hmm. Giving? Ah? Kare? I can't hear you. I'm sure you have to So, sorry? Liberality, generosity, giving. So we have three. So how do we decide? Right. So you can look to the Senyi. Jimba Senyi Kare. His Kare Sa. Tongwa, Sem Tongwa. Tongwe sem, tatare. Tongwe sem. Tongwe sem. You know, in, in, in Bodhichar Avatara, uh, um, Shanti Devi said, You give money to all the beggars in the world. This is not Jimba. Otherwise, then Buddha would never have become. So it is not actually physical giving. Tongwe, tongwe sem. It's a mind that got that. So you need, maybe you think about the, the Shenyi. Not the drashe, seni. Yeah. And then, jimpe, you have uh, this um, instrumental. Uh, instrumental case, this jejarwa. How you express jeja in English? By, with, through, mm. all these ways. Jimpe longchu. Jimpe longchu. Jimpe longchu. That's just simple words. So, 
what is the what is the message that is saying here? The, the message clearly is that through giving, however you want, through giving, you will experience um, wealth. But that's too long, because this is a verse. So what if you said, through giving, wealth, literal, <laughs> through giving, wealth. Is an English reader going to understand the message of the original? No? Why not? I think so, is possible. <laughs> you know, we English, we are quite clever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always need verb. You can say, through English, oh, through English, <laughs> 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 through English comes, <laughs> through giving comes wealth. If you want to put comes, you can. Mm. Or arises, no, not arises, comes mm. through, by, mm. through giving, by giving. Some people might want to say giving produces wealth, mm -hmm. using the, the Jeddah as a subject. Mm -hmm. You can say that. And then sutrim, hai sutrim, morality, ethics. You know, you need to think of that. What does that mean? And dewa, happiness. So, the first thing, I personally, <coughs> thinking about this line, my personally thing, I would just say something like through giving wealth, through ethics, happiness. And leave it like that. Why? Because it's poetry. If it was a sentence, I wouldn't say. If it was a, a sentence or prose, I would say something like through giving comes wealth and, comma, or and through morality or ethics uh, arises happiness, something like that. I would put a verb in. Because the original author, <coughs> well, it's Buddha, I think, wasn't it? It's, it's Do, it's a sutra, isn't it? So the original, the Buddha, Maybe he didn't speak it like that, but the intention is that it is a verse and should be for memorizing. So, through giving wealth, through ethics, happiness. That's nice and easy to remember. And the meaning is there. I don't think there's any problem there, you know. So, <coughs> like that, we need to sort of... My, my basic message is that... Um, if you think about translation, please think about this process you know, carrying across. Just one final thing. Last, in the tra translation conference here, uh, one speaker, he said, you should take one text, one Tibetan text, should be translated in different ways according to audience. So one text text one translation for scientists, one translation for psychologists, you know, so forth. I'm not very happy with that. <laughs> you might be happy with it, but why? Because Tsongkhapa, he wrote one text, not three texts, you know. So I think my question to you is the translator is in the middle between the author and the audience. Who does he look to? Where is his um, damsik? If you, we have this word allegiance. Allegiance in Tibetan. Allegiance means like, if you are Tibetan, you have allegiance to Tibet. If you're Indian, you have allegiance to... Allegiance means you, you have some damsik, some bonding. Damsik. So where is the damsik of the uh, translator? Is it to the author? Is it to the reader? Or is it to both? And if it's to both, how much to the author? How much to the reader? My own opinion is that primarily the allegiance of Damsik is to the author. Because that's where you begin. You put on your hat, you become this Tibetan, then you bring it into English, right? And then when you bring it into English, then you have a little bit of Damsik towards the reader by making sure that you have grammar, syntax, punctuation, you know. So that way you have both. Then, at this, I was in a conference in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about this, but one speaker, Lexia Somo, you may know her. She 
said that in ancient Tibetan texts and Indian texts there were many texts that were very derogatory of women and she put lots up on there and they were very against women her point was these should not be translated but others mainly men <laughs> did not agree so this is a good point what do you think should we where 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 does the translator does he look to the author and think I must translate everything in the text because it's in the text. My job is not to change. I am translator. I am not a commentator. <laughs> or do they say, ah, oh, but this is wrong because these days women are not degraded like this. So you, the, the, you, you as translator, you must decide where you look. So this hopefully over the coming months we can, we can look at. Okay, there's much more to say, but I, I feel we've been here long enough. So tomorrow... Please come tomorrow. We will start tomorrow with a very simple translation. Of uh, you will do the translation. So just all you need is to bring your brains and a pen and some paper tomorrow, and we will look at the translation.